Good morning, folks. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. And we're down here this morning at the classroom area of the Pathfinder School. And I wanted to give you guys a quick training lesson today. That's something that I've never seen anyone talk about on YouTube. And I've never actually heard of anyone else teaching. That is a navigational technique to help you be more accurate when you're traveling over distance, especially if you're using the pace counting method to track your distance. Stay with me. And we'll get started. So probably the first thing we need to review really quick on this video is what is pace count to begin with? There are lots of videos on pace counting out there on the internet. I have videos on pace counting myself in my navigational series, which is where this video will end up living as well. So you can look up that playlist of navigational videos and find it. Pace counting is equal to the number of full paces. In other words, one step is half, the next step is a full pace. So the number of full paces for a set distance, and that distance is generally 100 yards or 100 meters, depending on the measurement system that you're using. Here at the Pathfinder School, we use everything in meters. Now, if you are tracking paces for a map that you have created yourself, then everything can be measured in paces and you don't need to worry about meters. It's just how many paces from one point to another. If you're using a map, however, and you're trying to track distance covered versus linear distance on a map, then you need to count paces in meters. So what you would do is you would find two points of reference that were 100 meters apart, and you would walk that distance and count every full pace. And however many paces it takes you to get to that 100 meters is your pace count. Now. To be more accurate with this, there's lots of things we have to do. We have to understand what our pace count is on flat land. We have to understand what our pace count is uphill, what our pace count is downhill, because both of those will change. Generally, your pace count will be lessened because you'll take longer steps trying to go uphill, and you'll have more paces going downhill because you'll be stepping unsure in terrain, and you won't take those long strides. So your pace count is going to vary depending on terrain. There's lots of things that affect your pace count, which we'll talk about in a minute, but your pace count should always be taken with the set loadout that you plan to hike with on the trail because the weight on your body can also change your pace count. We'll talk about that in a minute. To track our pace count, we use pacing beads, and we've talked about this in other videos as well. You basically have a string like paracord that has 14 beads on the string and they're separated in groups of nine and four. And as you walk that 100 meters and you've counted your paces, let's say for sake of discussion, it's 67. You would count one to 67 and then you would drop one of the nine beads. When you get to the next 67 count or you've traveled 200 meters, you would drop a second bead and so on until you've dropped nine beads. And then the next consecutive pace count to 100 meters, you would drop one of the four beads, which would bring you to one kilometer, and you would raise the nine beads. So it's basically an abacus that you're wearing on your gear somewhere. You can use rocks in your pocket, switch them back and forth, tie knots in a string, anything that you have to do to track paces you can do, but carrying a set of pacing beads is probably the easiest way to do that and it doesn't take up any room in your kit or add any weight, and it's always there for you to use when you need it. Okay, as you begin to track your pace count, and your pace count needs to be tracked with several different factors in mind so that you can either average your pace count for undulating type terrain, or you can understand that you're in a certain type of terrain or a certain situation for a certain amount of time and adjust your pace count to that. So the five main things that affect your pace count, going back to our five by five system here, is the weight that you're carrying on your body. The more weight you're carrying, the less stride you're gonna have in your paces. It's going to affect your pace count. The terrain, is it uphill? Is it downhill? Is it sand? Is it mud? Is it wet and slippery on clay? All of those terrain features can affect your pace count. So you need to check your pace count uphill. Check your pace count downhill. Check your pace count in loose terrain, things like that. 
and have these things noted in your book, in your notebook, with your nav stuff, so that you understand that. Weather. Weather conditions like wind that you're walking against, rain that you're walking through, fog that you can't see very well through. All those type of things can also affect your pace count. Injuries. Injuries so small as a blister on your foot can affect your pace count. Injuries to your body that cause you pain as you walk or as you maneuver can affect your pace count. And then last but not least is fatigue. How tired are you? The more tired you get, the more your pace count is going to be affected. So these five main things need to be remembered all the time in your head because you will adjust your pace count sometimes on the fly depending on these conditions. So tracking our pace count with changes like this as well is also very important. And it's hard for you to do that with some of this stuff like an injury. It's hard for us to go out and mock up an injury and then go check our pace count. But you need to realize that your pace count is going to vary with this stuff. And the majority of the time, the effect of all of these is going to be that your pace count is going to increase, not decrease. So all of these things will increase pace count for the most part or add to the amount of pace that it takes to get to that 100 meter mark if you're using a metric system. Okay, now that we understand what pace count is, things that affect our pace count, and let's just say for sake of purpose that we've taken all of this into consideration and our pace count in whatever terrain we're walking on is virtually spot on. How accurate are we gonna be at that point? I would tell you this, this is the part that no one teaches. This is the part that you've probably never heard before. Your pace count will still not be accurate because the distances that you're traveling or that you expect to travel by measuring on a map are not the same distance of actual travel on the ground, especially in undulating or uneven terrain. Let me show you an example of that. If we look at a map, and it's got terrain features on it. Let's just say that this is a hilltop that our route is going to take us over to get from point A to point B. If we measure that distance, let's just say this is a waypoint here of some sort. If we measure this distance and this distance, on our map, what we're measuring is a linear distance on the map that's a flat piece of paper in two dimensions. What this is actually going to look like when we start to walk it is this. Now we've walked uphill and downhill. And this distance is not equal to this distance. If we don't know exactly what this distance is, and we go by this distance of a linear measurement on our map, our pace count will never be accurate, no matter how accurate we've made it, by understanding the terrain, understanding if we're injured, understanding the weather, understanding the weight we're carrying. All of those things that make our pace count more accurate, fall short of this. And the only way we can do this is to figure out this. We have a triangle here, and we have two sides that we understand the measurement of. We have a distance linear here, which is B, which is called the run. And then we have the rise here, which is A, and that's measured by contour interval lines on the map. If you don't know what contour intervals are on the map, again, refer to some of my other videos or other videos on the internet that will show you what contours are. And if each one of these contour levels is 20 meters and this is zero, then we've got 20, 40, 60, 80 meters of rise to where we're walking. And then we have a distance from here to here or here to here, and then here to here. So we have two triangles there that are fairly equal in size in this example, but we need to figure out what 
this distance is and what this distance is, which is our slope. And that slope line is going to be longer than the linear distance. So how do we figure that out? Okay, so how do we figure this out? Let's just say for sake of purpose that we have this. And it's 320 meters in this direction. And we have 150 meters of rise. So our terrain looks like this. And let's say this side is less. Maybe this side is only 300 meters to the center line of where we're going. All right. What we need to figure out is we need to figure out a couple square roots. Now, figuring out square roots of things can be difficult if you're not very good at math. But you can figure out the formulas. You can do it all on paper. If you're carrying a notebook, you can do it all the hard way. Long before calculators were ever invented, people were still doing square roots and they did it on paper and it can be done. However, if you've got a small scientific calculator in your kit, then it's easy. If you have an iPhone or an Android or a Samsung or whatever you have, whatever operating system you have, most smartphones have scientific calculators built into them that come with the phone. And there's one button you have to push to get a square root. Type a number in, you push a button, it gives you a square root. That square root is what we need to figure out this distance and this distance. So let's look at this example real quick, okay? What we would do is we would take 150 times 150, and that would give us 22,500. Then we would figure out 320 times 320, which gives us 102,400. We add those together and we get 124,900. Once we have that number, we can plug that number into our calculator and hit square root, or we can figure out the square root of this number on paper which happens to be three, five, three. So this distance is 353 meters, not 320. It's actually 33 meters further than it is on the map. If you compound that with the other side, that's going to be another distance, another distance of probably 320 some meters instead of 300 meters. Now you've added 50 meters to the route. And if you are going doing this several times during your route over four or five K of distance that you're covering, you can easily be 100, 150, 200 meters off in your final pace count from where your intended location of ending is. That's the importance of figuring out the actual pace count on slope versus a linear measurement on a map because this will definitely add to the distance. So no matter how accurate your pace count is, if your pace count's at 100 meters, you're measuring at 100 meters, and it's actually, if you measure that 320, and it's actually 353, it's never going to be right. No matter what you do, it's never going to be right. Now, how accurate can you get with this? It depends on how meticulous you are with your map. Your pace count is going to never be completely accurate, except on flat, linear land most of the time. Things are going to change. Those five things we talked about are going to change your pace count. It's generally going to be more paces to get there than you thought it was going to be. It's the same thing with this. It's probably going to be a few more paces than you thought it was going to be because all of these terrain things that change, change your pace count for 100 meters. So to get to this 353, we have to be as accurate as we can with our pace count in general, because we know that if we are accurate to 320, it's still not going to be accurate to the actual terrain that we walked. That's the secret to the situation. And that is the thing that I've never seen taught. I've never seen talked about. I've never seen anybody make a YouTube video on understanding what the actual slope is 
and what that distance is versus the flat distance on a map to more accurately understand the distance we have to physically walk to get from point A to point B. You might say, well, the train that I'm gonna be walking in doesn't change elevation very much. There's not very much slope. And so it's really not gonna matter. Well, let's look at that. So if you have this, instead of our other example, this line is still going to be longer than this line because of this, all right? Even if it's only 10 meters. Compound that five, six, seven, eight times during a 5K walk, and now you're back to that, I'm 50, 60, 70, 80 meters off. The distance I thought I was gonna have to walk versus what I actually have to walk. And so that's the importance of this. Even on slight sloping terrain, this can become important if there's lots of it during your route. The key to this is understanding your pace count to begin with, knowing how to read a map, and understanding what contour intervals are and what terrain features are on a map. If you can put those things together with this, you can be much more accurate with your pace count. All right, guys, listen, I appreciate you joining me today for this video, just another training video in my series for YouTube. And I'm trying to put things out there that I think are important that will leave a record for people to see, you know, several years from now where they take a download and keep in their own personal hard drive and things like that to have lessons in front of them that they can learn from. There are lots and lots of things out there on the internet, but this is one thing that I have never seen. And that's why I wanted to get it posted up today in this training series. We have an advanced class starting day after tomorrow. They will be practicing this methodology while they're doing long distance navigation from point A to point B and finding resources along the way, as well as while they're doing self mapping or what's called Paul mapping. And I have videos on that in my series as well. If you want to check out that playlist on navigation. Guys, I appreciate your support. I appreciate everything that you do for our school, for our family, for our business. For all our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, I thank you very much for your views, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks.